Warriors, in today's video, we're going to talk about the main anxiety symptoms that you're experiencing right now and how to overcome each and every one of them. I'm so excited. Let's go. Friends, welcome to another important video on my channel. Make sure to subscribe to the number one anxiety support channel there is on YouTube right here. And what we're discussing today are physical anxiety symptoms. My friends, so many people ask me questions based on specific anxiety symptoms that tend to take them from a place of being emotionally neutral to a place of catastrophe. And what I want to do today is I want to give you an example of these anxiety symptoms and how we can overcome each and every one of them from an emotional perspective. Because so many of these physical symptoms have an emotional root cause to them. And today we're going to go deeper than we ever have before. Let's talk about the first symptom. Now, comment below if in fact this is a symptom you're currently experiencing with your anxiety. We're talking about dizziness, okay? Now, here are a few of the things that cause dizziness and perpetuate the dizziness that comes with the anxiety, okay? We're talking about being flighty with dizziness. We're talking about scattered thinking. We're talking about a refusal to look. Now, when it comes to the refusal to look, I believe that this has something to do with looking at the other side, looking at a perspective that opposes the anxiety perspective, right? Because as you're going through the day, you're going to find that you have a negativity bias, right? Your brain sorts for the negatives far before it sorts for the positives, and your brain sorts for the threat far before it sorts for the safety, right? So with dizziness, we need to understand that there's a lot going on at one time, and there's a fear of looking at the other side, the other perspective, because it's just not habitual and we feel like we're going to miss out or lose out on something. Okay. So these things perpetuate the dizziness. But the question is, Dennis, what can we do about the dizziness symptom of anxiety? Now, there's a lot of things we can do, but here's one of the most effective things that you can start doing today for the dizziness. Okay. All you have to do for a three minute period is grab an object. It can be an apple, for example. Put it in front of you and begin focusing on just that apple. As you focus on that apple for three minutes in a meditative state, obviously with your eyes open, I want you to recognize some of the different characteristics of that apple that you may not have noticed before. When you're done the three minutes, great. You can do this for as many times as you want throughout the day. Make this a habit, a lifestyle habit to get you to refocus on the one, right? So instead of getting scattered with your thinking, you may have this moment where you catastrophize something and then that creates a whole spider web effect that branches to other fears and such. And instead of doing that, you're going, no, it's not like that. It's like this. Right. Instead of that, it's like this. I can think more rational. And because I've practiced the one thing meditation right now, when I focus on that one other mental aspect, I can grow it. I can strengthen it. Right. And you're going to find that you're no longer playing this tug of war. So the one thing meditation is absolutely fantastic for dizziness. But again, my friends, you have to make sure that you are consistent with this, right? We're not doing anything here to heal anxiety. We're doing it as lifestyle changes. We're becoming someone different. And when you think this way, ooh, hoo -hoo, my God, the law of attraction, all sorts of other laws will work for you, my friends, okay? Second symptom of anxiety that I get so, so often is chronic fatigue. Okay, people come to me asking, Dennis, 
I've got chronic fatigue. What do I do? It's difficult to get out of bed. I feel like I have to take a nap at like 1 p.m. I feel like even the smallest things trigger me so very much. I understand I've been in your shoes, warrior. Chronic fatigue has a lot to do with resistance, has a lot to do with boredom, and has a lot to do with the lack of love for what one does. Okay, so these all contribute to the chronic fatigue. Okay, now what can we do about it to overcome it? Okay, what we can do is we can begin to pursue your creativity and change things up. Okay, so you're going to find that when you begin to embrace your creative sides a bit more, the chronic fatigue starts to dissipate, right? This is the beauty of tapping back into your creativeness. Many anxiety sufferers are afraid to be creative because they're so caught up in standing guard to the next threat, whether that be external or through their physical symptoms, right? But we need to get back to being creative. And when you're creative, you need to put your heart into it, not just, oh, I'm doing this creative act so that I can lessen my anxiety. No, 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 no. We don't do that, right? Because that's kind of like looking around the corner, but at the same time looking behind you, right? Oh my God, what's going to happen next? I really want this, but I know this is coming next. You don't want to play that game, do you? So embracing and enacting creative acts with putting your heart into it and changing things up, okay? If you're going through chronic fatigue and you've got the same poster in your house for the last six months, get rid of it, right? Replace it with something new, right? If your office has always been in the same place, go ahead and move it from one place to another. Your brain's gonna go, what's going on here? There are some changes being made and after the changes are implemented, right, the organism is still here. He's still alive. She's still alive. So change must be safe, right? We need to prove safety to the mind, body, and spirit with every anxious opportunity that arises, my friends, okay? So that's how we would tackle chronic fatigue. Now let's move on. Third symptom, comment below if this one's common in your life. I hear it all the time in your questions. We're talking about aches, aches and pains and stiffness and rigidity in the body, right? But more so aches, right? And these aches really prevent people from doing what they really want to do. They want to play sports. They want to dance. They want to do all sorts of things, but the aches are just taking over their lives, right? Aches have everything to do with the longing for love and longing to be held. Longing for love and longing to be held, my friends, okay? And if you look at your life right now and ask yourself some serious questions, you know, ask yourself the question of, am I longing for love? Do I not feel the love from other people or do I feel unsupported in life, right? Um, am I really craving the hug, right, from people? Am I craving the hug from my mother, my father, things that they never gave to me when I was a child? Am I longing for hugs and loves? What is the way to overcome this? We're talking about regular self-hugs with emotional release. All you have to do is as many times throughout the day, if aches are taking over your life, Grab your hands, wrap them around yourself, and just give yourself the biggest self-hug you've ever given yourself over and over and over again. And when you do, make sure that you're really connected to the self-hug saying, you know what, I deserve this. I deserve this. You are enough. These are the types of words that will show up because of the self-hug, my friends. So self-hugs will go a long way to taking care of those aches. I've seen it in my own life. I've seen it in other people's lives. These are real solutions, right? Most of the time when we experience these physical symptoms, we think it's because of a structural issue. We think there's an abnormality and we go get checked multiple times and yet we're still looking for the physical cause. There may never be one, my friends. So we have to understand that these are the connections we have to make and self-hugs will go a long way towards taking care of those aches, my friends. 
Symptom number four. Now, this has everything to do with things connected to the heart, right? So I get a lot of questions, people asking me, Dennis, I'm really worried about my heart or I'm getting a lot of heart palpitations or I just felt my heart skip. These sorts of heart concerns, okay? Heart distress and palpitations have everything to do with the representation, the center of love and security, okay? So your heart is the center of love and security. And at this point in your life, again, there's that magic word, love, right? Maybe the love is just not there in the amount that it needs to be and the consistency that it needs to be coming from the inside. And there's a feeling of a, a lack of security, right? It's kind of like you never feel grounded as you're walking. Maybe you've got some jelly legs, but you never feel grounded. You feel like you need to run all the time. You feel like you need to escape things all the time. So if this is the case, then, you know, those heart distresses mentally are going to show up, right? Now, how do we take care of it? My friends, for this, I want to turn to a specific affirmation that helped me so very much. And you can use this affirmation. I'm actually going to give you a hack with affirmations right after this. But let's go through the affirmation first, okay? So anything related to heart distresses. I am approved of by all of life. All is well. I am safe. Let me repeat that. I am approved of by all of life. All is well. I am safe. I love it. I love it. I love when affirmations are said at least 48 to 52 repetitions, right? Because that's how much it takes to ingrain into the subconscious mind, number one. And when we actually start to feel the truth behind the affirmation, oh my goodness, what a physical effect it tends to have, right? So that's a wonderful affirmation to use for anything related to the heart, my friends. And the Instagram hack that I want to give you is in order to repeat a, 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 a affirmation, all you have to do is record it to the story, right? Record it and then just kind of save it, right? Save it. And then when you go back into your camera roll to, to put the, the story back on there, it will repeat itself, right? As long as you don't hit the X, it will repeat. So that's a great way to recondition yourself into what the affirmation is saying. Okay. I'll give a, a much more detailed description in the, in the description of this video as well. Okay. So that's how we would handle heart, anything related to heart concerns, that sort of thing, uh, mental, physical connection. And finally, of course, anxiety. Okay. Anxiety. We're going to talk about anxiety really quickly here. Anxiety, the symptom, because a lot of people out there, including me just a few years ago, was really afraid of having anxiety. So I didn't have anxiety, but the fear of having anxiety perpetuated a lot of distress, worry, and symptoms. So we're going to talk about anxiety. Now, in Louise Hay's book, Heal Your Body, she mentions the, 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 the connection to anxiety, which is not trusting the flow and the process of life. Not trusting the flow and the process of life. Is this you? Is this you? Like, ask yourself that question. Is this me? I don't trust anything. Definitely don't trust my future based on what took place in my past. Is this you? If it is, shoot me a comment below. Let's chat. But, she makes a very good point here because as I look back on my own life, I didn't really trust the flow of life, right? Uh, I didn't trust that I could move beyond bad things that happened to me. I didn't trust that challenges could give me lessons. I didn't trust that things appeared in my life for a specific reason. I just didn't, didn't trust the process of life. And so what do we do to overcome the anxiety from this perspective? Here's what we do. We make peace with uncertainty. We make peace with uncertainty. And there are some really great Eastern traditions that can help with moving this process along, right? Uh, if you want to look into them. Um, but when we begin to let go of the tight grip, 
that we've been holding on to called life and trying to control everything for the need for certainty, then what tends to happen is we're going to feel vulnerable. When we feel vulnerable, we must understand that we are moving in the exact direction we need to. I tell this to people all the time. When it feels like your life is completely falling apart, that's when it's really coming together, right? And you're going to get that sense as you move away from irrational fear, overvaluing worry, and keeping anxiety around each and every day, right? So when we overcome this, okay, this this need to control everything and have certainty, our anxiety will lessen and dissipate, right? My friends, these are the anxiety symptoms, some of the causes and some of the ways to overcome them. I want to know which one of these uh, points, these symptoms spoke to you the loudest. Comment below. Let's chat. And if you enjoyed this video and want more videos related to anxiety symptoms on this channel, give this video a like, my friends. I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Remember that you are more than anxiety. Don't ever forget it. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.